Support Wrestle Talk. Support each other. After massively putting over NXT by beating everyone without a proper receipt, Charlotte Flair was called up to the main roster again following Money in the Bank. Becky Lynch had just found out she was pregnant and would be taking an indefinite period of time off, while WWE had just found out they'd accidentally built their entire women's division around only two people. Charlotte was originally meant to carry on her run in NXT, but instead she was hastily moved back to Raw to feud with its new champion Asuka. These updated plans were a reportedly set to go through SummerSlam. With Charlotte back on the main roster and in the face of declining ratings across all shows, WWE started to book her on Raw and SmackDown to create the Omni Flare. Because surely the only other consistently protected wrestler in the women's division wouldn't also suddenly leave the company for an indefinite period of time. Jokes, that's exactly what happened. After being built up to face Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship by beating Liv Morgan, by beating Ruby Riot, and by beating Asuka herself, Twice, Asuka just eked out a win over Flair on the 17th of June episode. Nia Jax then attacked Flair backstage, which Charlotte kind of sold, properly writing her off TV. There were several conflicting reports about this at the time, with the Wrestling Observer writing she was taking off time for surgery until January 2021, while TalkSport claimed she'd likely return for SummerSlam. Charlotte herself said in an interview that she'd be back in just a few weeks. But now, on a lengthy Twitter thread, Flair has revealed the real reason she's had to step away from WWE. My air conditioning is broken and we have a little free time. These tweets may be spaced out a bit, but we're going to talk time off, plastic surgery, and boobs. The entire world having an opinion on the topic bothers me more than I care to let on, so we are going to discuss it. I'm going to save the history of my boobs for a different bedtime story, so picture it. Charlotte, North Carolina, 2018. A young queen, shortly after her career-defining WrestleMania victory, finds herself sicker than sick at her brother's house. A trip to the doctor tells us the likely culprit is silicone poisoning and that my implant had been leaking for quite some time. It was one of the worst cases the doctor had seen. At that time, I had a few options to fix the issue. Each option had a specific recovery time. I love this job more than anything, so I picked the option that allowed me to return the soonest. That was the choice I made. Fast forward to a few months ago, something felt off, so I went back to the doctor. Same issue again. This time I'm going with an option that I believe will solve the issue long time, even though the recovery period is a little longer than I would like. To clarify, I do not have silicone poisoning this time. The surgery is cosmetic to fix an issue from a prior surgery. I'll be back when I'm ready. The body will be rested and the mind still focused on legacy. Focused on this job, focused on being better, always being better. If Flair took a longer period of time off back in 2018, there's a very real possibility that WWE wouldn't have treated the women's division so seriously. Charlotte effectively sacrificed her own health, not just for her spot, as nearly all wrestlers work through injuries in that regard, but to build up the perspective of women's wrestling within the promotion. So thank you, Charlotte, and a speedy recovery. While you sure did beat a lot of our favorites, over and over again, WWE arguably wouldn't be presenting the best women's division in the world right now. And it would still be the same segments of 15 years ago, like women wrestling in dresses or singing karaoke. Thanks for your support on Patreon, your best friend Neon Pallet, and he's no jackass, Dano. Last week, Lana revealed that both her parents had tested positive for COVID-19, with her mother even being admitted into intensive care. Thankfully, Mama Lana is now doing much better, as an update video revealed she had been off oxygen for more than 24 hours and is no longer in the ICU. Their family struggles have since taken another turn, though, as Lana's real-life husband, former WWE star Rusev, who now goes by his real name Miro, has confirmed in a Twitch stream that 
he has also tested positive for COVID-19. Miro revealed he first noticed he was losing his senses of taste and smell, one of the main symptoms of coronavirus, so he immediately went to get a test, which returned a positive result. Right now, he only feels fatigued, which he initially thought was just because of him working out at the gym. This likely rules him out of a tease debut for Impact Wrestling and their big show Slammiversary this Saturday. You can follow Lana on Twitter at Lana WWE and Rusev at To Be Miro. Please do go over there and send them some love. It really does make a difference to see support like that when you're going through something tough. Or you could just book them in a storyline that exploits their very real life situation. In his first feud since returning from an injury slash arrest for a DWI last October, WWE booked Jeff Hardy in a storyline where he was framed for hitting Elias with his car while seemingly intoxicated. It unsurprisingly received the critical reaction from fans CM Punk and Jeff's own brother AEW wrestler Matt Hardy. In a Twitter thread of Alex McCarthy calling the Junkie storyline not entertaining at all and is doing nothing for anyone involved, a fan, King of the North, replied, Jeff Hardy is being presented as a junkie with no reason to celebrate his time with us. What if he relapsed? A worry that Matt himself chipped in on. I'm very happy with how AEW has let me brand my persona, allowing me to help younger talent on and off screen, while also respectfully celebrating my legacy and contributions to the industry. I have those same concerns about the unneeded pressure on my brother. Matt then clarified his feelings in a separate tweet. Make no mistake, from what I've seen Jeff do in ring, he's looked incredible. As a performer, I praise his recent performances. Ultimately, whatever he does is his decision and his alone. My take on his current story is merely my opinion, which doesn't make it right or wrong. What do you think about SmackDown's Jeff Hardy storyline? Let me know in the comments down below where I'll be replying from out of nowhere, saying that the big man thinks it's such good S word. In a new clip from WWE Chronicle, when Jeff got backstage following his backlash match against Sheamus, you can hear Vince McMahon say, that was f***ing awesome, holy sh it was really good. Speaking from out of nowhere, it's come out there's been an NXT call up to the main roster that we all kind of missed. WrestleTalk.com's Louis Dangor exclusively reported last month, because we do exclusives now, don't you know, that Dominic Dijakovic and Chelsea Green were set to make their Raw debut soon from NXT. And another name has just been revealed, and it's already kind of happened? WrestleTalk's arch nemesis Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful is reporting Vanessa Bourne was actually called up back in January or February, but still hasn't made her main roster debut, which would explain why she's not been on NXT TV. Sapp adds that Bourne's call up was similar to Riddick Moss's. Their deals were expiring soon, and being brought to the main roster was part of them signing a new contract. But with all the creative changes backstage and real world pandemics, there is no no solid plan on when to debut Bourne on Raw or SmackDown. And those creative changes are now being done by just one man. Well, it's, it's always been one man with Vince McMahon, but after firing both Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman from their executive director roles on Raw and SmackDown over the last year, it's now also being done by Vince's main McMahon, Bruce Pritchard. And according to his podcast co-host, Conrad Thompson, he's noticing the strain of the job on Pritchard. It's not a little bit of stress, it's a lot of stress. Every now and again, certainly I'll get a call from Bruce and you can just hear it in his voice. He's tired, he's sleepy, he's stressing. Running both Raw and SmackDown would be rather stressful in the best of times, let alone a pandemic, where you have numerous limitations due to safety precautions and several of your top stars choosing not to work. But that isn't just a WWE problem. New Japan have found themselves without their top foreign acts because of travel restrictions, and they responded in a big way at the weekend's New Japan Cup and Dominion doubleheader. Not only did Evil win the New Japan Cup, he won it and joined the Bullet Club as their apparent new leader, replacing Jay White, which led to him main eventing the following day's Dominion show against dual IWGP heavyweight
Cruiserweight Champion and Intercontinental Champion Tetsuya Naito for both titles, which he won with the help of Dick Togo, becoming the 71st IWGP Heavyweight Champion and 25th Intercontinental Champion. He's also still the never openweight six-man tag champions with his LIJ stablemates, which must be pretty awkward now. He would later accept a challenge from former LIJ stablemate Hiromu Takahashi for both titles. According to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, Evil becoming the Bullet Club's new leader is a way for New Japan to establish a new top heel in the company, while Jay White and other international stars cannot travel to Japan during this pandemic. Also on the show, Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi of Suzuki Goon won the IWGP Tag Team Championships from Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kota Ibushi, which was originally supposed to be a six-man tag with Minoru Suzuki, but the scariest man on the planet came down with a fever on July 10th, and New Japan made the call to take him off the show as a precautionary measure. Speaking of New Japan, they feature in Adam Blompier's brand new list video of the 20 funniest wrestling moments outside of WWE. Click the video on the screen on the right to check that out, and click the other video to watch the WrestleTalk podcast with Luke Owen and True Heel Heat's SP three talking Matt Riddle as a future Universal Champion. And it's a Quizzlemania week. Go over and subscribe to Parts for Unknown as we have a huge show coming up for you on Wednesday. Go and follow us on Twitter to find out who the guests are going to be at WrestleTalk underscore TV. I've been Ollie Davis and that was wrestling.